You're all a bunch of bitches. Welcome back, Guitar Chefs. You're probably super excited to see me because deep down you love me, you wanna be me, you wanna wear my face as a mask, you wanna have my children, but bitch, you ain't the only one. And you'll be pleased to know that I feel the exact same about yourself. Oh. And that's a lie. I'm just hanging out here around my apartment as I normally do because I have no friends or social life. And wow, what a beautiful apartment I live in and have been living in for the past six weeks. Why don't I just take a quick second to give you guys a tour, except nope. Second microwave reveal and new apartment tour happening at 100,000 subscribers. Which is actually really soon. I can't wait to celebrate by having a 100K party. It won't be my first time though because I already had one when I reached 100,000 followers on Instagram. I hope this is better than the Insta one though because only five people showed up to that. Plus two random girls from Tinder. And yes, I smashed one of them. So just like I fucked that Tinder girl, make sure that you fuck that like button. But don't subscribe because I haven't actually started the video yet. And I hate when YouTubers try to get people to subscribe to their channel as soon as the video starts without providing any actual incentive to do so. It's fucking needy mate. Speaking of the video, let's talk about it. Today I'm gonna to be showing you seven different scales as well as playing solos that actually use them. We're gonna be going in an order from easiest to hardest. You're gonna to wanna to watch all this video too because at the end, I'm gonna be playing an extremely hard bonus scale and it is quite difficult. But don't skip ahead, how disrespectful that would be. If you do that and I find out, I'll be canceling guitar. No more guitar. All right, seems like we have an agreement here. So let's make like a bunny and hop in. The first scale that we're gonna be discussing is a scale that every guitar player is familiar with. It's the first scale we all play. You probably know which one I'm thinking of and you'd be correct. It's the chromatic scale. Whether you realize it or not, you've definitely played this. Now, assuming you're an idiot, which you must be if you're watching me, I'll take some time to explain it. The chromatic scale is a scale that contains every note, literally all of them. Every note fits in the chromatic scale. The chromatic scale accepts every note. No note left behind in the chromatic scale. Human rights, every note has rights in the chromatic scale. Women and children first, every note comes first in the chromatic scale. All men are created equal, all notes are created equal in the chromatic scale. So you've definitely played this scale before, even if you didn't realize it. Now go, brag to your friends how you know the chromatic scale. They'll look at you and say, chromatic scale? Wow. That sounds like a pretty hard scale. I don't know how to play it. You must be really good at guitar. Then you'll look back at them and say, yeah, I am. Now let's listen to an example of the chromatic scale in action. We need to keep in mind that I'm still within a key, B flat to be specific, but I'll be using a lot of chromaticism. But I'm still targeting chord tones for my resolutions. Roll it! Okay. The best time to use the chromatic scale is to create tension or use it as passing tones. Another place to use the chromatic scale would be in the last bar or two of a section before entering a new one. Enter level two. Now remember, I'm ranking these scales by their order of difficulty. The next scale that we're gonna talk about is really easy to play and every guitarist has played it. I mean, who hasn't? And yes, I'm going exactly where you think I'm going this time. The second level scale here is none other than whole tone scale. The whole tone scale is a symmetrical scale. Every note is separated by the distance of a whole tone, which makes it really easy to play, especially between the G and B string. Big fun in the sun. Technically only two whole tone scales exist. If we start on C, the notes of the scale would include D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and then we're back to C. If we start on D flat, the notes of the scale would include E flat, F, G, A, B, and then we're back to D flat. The reason that only two can exist is because if we start on D, we would just end up playing the same notes as we did when we started on C. Unacceptable. Like the chromatic scale, the whole tone scale is good for creating tension. A good time to use it is playing off the third of a five chord in a two, five, one chord progression. 
Hashtag jazz. That would mean you start on the third of the chord and then just play the scale. Technically, you could start on the root too because the root would be included in that same scale. Check it out. As I'm sure you noticed, in that solo I was making use of the whole tone scale. The chord progression was a simple 2-5-1 in the key of D, so I was using it over the A7 chord. The next scale that we're going to talk about is a scale that not many people are familiar with. It's a very uncommon scale, and mostly found in traditional Japanese reggae music. Don't be surprised if you've never heard of it. Barely anyone knows the scale exists, and it tends to not be used by guitar players. It would actually be shocking if you knew this scale. Our level 3 is none other than the pentatonic scale. The pentatonic scale is a five note scale that you've probably never heard of. You probably also didn't know that it has five shapes. The first two scales we looked at didn't have unique shapes because of the way they were structured. But the pentatonic scale isn't structured like they were. Not all scales are created equal. The minor pentatonic scale structure is one, flat three, four, five, and flat seven. The structure changes based on what shape you're playing. If you started off the flat third, then technically the structure would be one, two, three, five, six. This shape specifically is known as the major pentatonic scale. God, I'm throwing so much theory at you guys today. The stupid people watching are probably having a heart attack trying to keep up. If that's the case, then I encourage you to get off the damn cigarettes and start paying attention. How are you supposed to make it in the real world if you don't know the difference between the minor and the major pentatonic shapes? This shit's more useful than knowing the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. And I wouldn't be where I am today without knowing that. grooves and shit, mate. I only used the pentatonic scale in that solo, obviously. What do you think? Was it tasty or was it cringy, as the kids say? By the way, that term is way too overused. You wanna know what's actually cringy? When you're at the grocery store and you're getting really pissed because you're in line and you've been in line for a really long time and you see other lines that are moving faster than yours. Then you look at your cashier and you notice he's only scanning things with one hand. And then you say, hey, scan with both hands. And then he looks at you and you realize he's an amputee and only has one hand. Now that's some awkward situation, mate. This video is also pretty cringy. Make sure you rank these solos in an order from your least to most favorite. I like to study that shit. Help me make better solos and content. Just do it! Enter level four. This next scale has actually never been played by a guitar player. It's called the red scale. And it's played by adding one note to the pentatonic scale between the fourth and fifth degrees, the red note. It's really common to see the scale being used in a genre called the reds. I'll play you an example now, but I'm also gonna be putting some arpeggios in there because just the red scale by itself is, it's pretty fucking lame, mate. Enter level five. The next level is the major scale. Wait a minute. Who the fuck is that guy?
The major scale has seven modes. God, I feel like a broken record talking about this because I've already explained it so many times in my life. The first one is obviously major, then followed by Dorian. Don't make things fucking difficult, okay? Otherwise you're gonna piss me off, but I'm not even mad. The Dorian mode contains all the same notes as the major scale. You're just starting on the second degree of the major. Then you play all the notes and complete the octave. That's it, okay? That's fucking it. Don't over complicate it. It's fucking easy. Modes are just different arrangements of the major scale. Next is Phrygian, which starts off the third. Then Lydian, which starts off the fourth. Mixolydian, which starts off the fifth. Then we have Aeolian, also known as natural minor, which starts off the sixth. And finally, we have Locrian off the seventh. God, now how hard was that? Take that, every other music teacher in the world. I teach all this stuff in 52-week guitar player, by the way. Now let's check out the major scale in action, except I'm in the relative minor key, but all the notes are the same. Enter level six. Hey Brandon, how you doing today? Good Brandon, thanks for asking. You're looking very handsome today too. Definitely the best looking guitar player. Oh, geez, well I don't know about that Brandon. Have you looked in a mirror lately? I would, but I had to flip all the mirrors around in my house because they were too distracting. Ha 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 ha. Raffle, 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 raffle. Ha ha ha. You're all a bunch of bitches. New apartment tour, 100,000 subscribers. But don't subscribe to my channel. The easiest way to think of the melodic minor scale it's just a major scale with a flattened third. Some people teach to think of it as a natural minor scale with a raised sixth and seventh when you're ascending and a normal sixth and seventh when you're descending. Some people are also fucking stupid. Nah, but that's more of a classical way of teaching and I come from a jazz background. When using the melodic minor scale in jazz, you don't approach it like that. And honestly, nobody does when they're improvising. I've posted about the melodic minor scale before and stupid people always say, you have to lower the sixth and seventh when you're descending. I can always tell that those people have never actually used the melodic minor scale in a soloing situation. And they're either classically trained or just shouting what they learned from theory class without actually putting it into practice. We use it in jazz for the extensions that it creates. The altered scale is used a lot in jazz, and it's actually a mode of the melodic minor scale. The main place I like to use the melodic minor scale is when I solo over the 5 chord in a 2-5-1 chord progression. Now I'm going to show you a couple licks where I combine it with a major mode. First will be the major scale, then the melodic minor to create tension, and then we'll resolve. Roll it! <laughs> The melodic minor scale has its own family of chords just like the major scale. You can get some pretty strange chords from it like a minor major 7 or a major 7 sharp 5. And again this is the weird sort of shit that only Starbucks baristas enjoy. I'm gonna play a solo now over those two chords in a modal vamp. We're going to be in the key of G melodic minor and our chords are G minor major 7 and B flat major 7 sharp 5. Dark A. And finally, we've entered level seven. The scale that I've assigned to level seven is the hardest simply because I personally haven't given it as much attention as I have to the others. But it sounds hella lit. You'll see right now when I use it in a solo. It's the legendary harmonic minor scale. The harmonic minor scale is pretty much a natural minor scale. We're just raising the seventh. It creates an exotic sound. 
It also has modes, just like most of the other scales we've looked at so far. Also remember, this is not the hardest scale of all. Do you remember at the start of the video when I said there's gonna be a bonus level at the end? That's uh, gonna be happening after this solo, so um, you're gonna wanna miss it. Okay, I won't keep you waiting anymore. It's time for big fun in the sun. Please try to contain your excitement. I'm going to show you the hardest scale. And it's tough, mate. Don't beat yourself up if you can never learn to play it. There's a lot of information out there on the internet. And it can be hard to navigate through everything in a sequential order when you don't know what you don't know. That's actually the reason why a lot of self-taught guitarists stop progressing. I even made an entire video about this subject. The link is in the description if you want to watch. I discussed the four elements that make up a pro guitarist as well as the one secret that separates a pro from a beginner. Hashtag clickbait. You ought to check it out. You can even book a free video call with me after the video. What a privilege for you. I'm gonna stop doing these free lesson calls eventually though. Better fucking do it while you can. Now I'm gonna play the B flat major scale, but I'm not gonna play it as individual notes. I'm gonna play it as chords. Drop two chord voicings to be specific with the bass note on the A string. Why is this hard? Because you're gonna see how goddamn stretchy these chords are. Roll the last clip. We have it. Heads up, if you're gonna try that scale, make sure your hands are stretched out. After a while, it starts to hurt. Don't let it turn you into a pussy. I don't know why some guys pay for nudes when they can just look in the mirror and see a pussy for free. Second microwave reveal, a new apartment tour coming soon. And I'm actually concerned that I won't finish editing this video before I reach 100,000. But like I said, don't subscribe to my channel. And you know what? Just, just leave, okay? Just fucking go. I don't want you here. <laughs>